Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Our AZ Votes 2024 election coverage continues tonight with former Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez, who is running for Congress as a Democrat in Arizona's 2nd Congressional District. Earlier this week, we spoke with Jonathan Nez about his candidacy and the issues of importance to the district, which covers much of northern and eastern Arizona. President Naz, welcome to Arizona Horizon. Thank you for joining us here as our AZ 2024 election special continues throughout primary and general election season. You're on your own here as far as the Democrats are concerned. You're running uh, for Congress in what is considered a pretty strong Republican district. Why are you doing it? Well, you know, last October, uh, we, I think all of us, when we turned on the television or uh, read the news, we saw this dysfunction happening in Washington, D.C. At that time, we had a couple of our own Arizona representatives being in the midst of all this controversy, uh, you know, uh, kicking out the uh, former Speaker uh, McCarthy and, of course, getting to uh, almost a brink of a government shutdown. And, you know, there are folks out there in the district that uh, encouraged me to, to run for office for this position. And of course, uh, you got to look at the numbers. And one of the numbers, uh, one of the information, uh, the information that I received was that, you know, just by getting into the race with the, over the over 18 years of public service, um, we were able to cut that deficit in half. Of course, as you know, my opponent has done the rest, and I think we are at even ground right now. So, with 30,000 more registered Republicans and Democrats in the district, how do you plan to attract, regardless of the, the final number when you cut in half and cut in half, right. it, it's still a pretty Republican district. Yes, sir. How do you plan to attract those folks? Well, just look at what happened with the uh, Arizona presidential uh, preference election. There was some protest vote against uh, former President Trump. So there are folks that are not wanting the extreme MAGA ideology or representatives to be in, in office. And factoring those, there are some, I call them, I think many of us call them common sense Republicans that want a representative to speak about the issues that are important to them. You know, it's not about being far right or far left, but really having someone Talk about the issues that are affecting us in Congressional District 2 what, and all of the state of Arizona. What is the most important issue? Well, infrastructure. I mean, look, look at what we did on the Navajo Nation. We were able, with the help of, uh, you know, the administration and Congress, working together bipartisan to getting dollars into uh, communities all across uh, the country, including tribal communities. You know, my constituency, yes, they were Navajo constituents. But we were able to bring over $2 billion into the Navajo Nation to improve the quality of life, getting broadband telecommunication expansion in, in those communities, water and electricity. And, you know, with, uh, with the experience that I have, uh, I, willed, I would hit the ground running, not, not on January, but right after election, because we do have... Uh, doors open for us in Washington, D.C. That said, and you talked about successes as president of the Navajo Nation, right. you lost your reelection campaign, right. Ezra. What do you think happened there, and how do you change that particular dynamic oh, when you're running for the district? What happened? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, we got New Mexico and Utah in on the Navajo Nation. So there's a, there's a lot of folks that, that, you know, had a lot of the COVID fatigue, mm. and uh, many of them, you know, weren't very happy with, a lot of those restrictions that we put in place, but they are coming around now. And you know what? They they tell me, say, President Nez, you know, you did uh, the the best job that you can do with the the limited resources you had, and the bottom at the end of the day, you save lives. And that's what it was all about. It wasn't about running to win the next election. It was about saving lives, and I did that for the Navajo people. With that in mind, the mandates and the lockdowns, in retrospect, right. was it the right thing to do? I'd do it again. I would do it again because we put in, we, we surrounded ourselves with uh, healthcare experts, scientists, and they guided us through the Navajo Nation. Look at what happened, Ted. We were number one in the country, maybe in the world, of COVID positive cases per capita but we were able to turn it around by utilizing science, by uh, getting the healthcare professionals input. And now we uh, showed the rest of the country that if you follow those protocols, 
we, you know, you will be able to save lives and help uh, many other people get through that. Your, your Republican opponent, the incumbent, uh, very much against mandates for masks, very right. much against mandates for COVID. Okay. Um, how do you convince those to think he did the right thing, that you did the right thing? Uh, what, he, what has he done? I mean, look at this district. It's still the same, maybe even worse uh, than before. You know, my, uh, our former congr congressman, Tom O'Halloran, uh, did a very outstanding job by bringing these dollars into uh, the district. And, you know, right now, we haven't seen our congressman. Uh, matter of fact, he doesn't even live in our district. And we need someone there that is from the district. You know, Ted, I was born in the district. I went to school in the district, and I'm still in the district, and I'm willing to help out in every way possible to, uh, uh, you know, talk about the issues that are affecting our people in Congressional District 2. Let's talk about uranium mining near the Grand Canyon. Um, the ban, the Biden administration put the new national monument up there. Right. Did you support that action? Do you support a ban on uranium mining near the Grand oh, Canyon? Oh, gosh. Ted. If you know the statistics there on the Navajo Nation, over 500 open uranium mines uh, there today. And it costs millions of dollars to clean those uranium, uranium mines up. And at one point in time, you know, the federal government opened up these tribal communities so they can extract uranium from these lands. And today there's high rates of cancers and you know, we get a lot of wind up there in northern Arizona. And just imagine open, five, over 500 open uranium mines and how that um, contamination gets into the air and we breathe it in. And it's no wonder our people up there are uh, being affected in high rates with cancers. And it's just not Navajo people. Look at what they're trying to do with the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act. They're trying to expand it. But because of the price tag in there, you know, they're, they're wanting uh, not to move forward on that. That said, uranium mining, according to your Republican opponent, is necessary for national security. It's necessary to not be dependent on foreign nations for our own uh, security and domestic needs. Does he have a point? Well, what he should be talking about is funding uh, the war in, uh, in Ukraine and helping Ukraine right now with the uh, the um, support that they need to push back on Putin, President Putin. And we should be able to fund uh, other places where, you know, there is a pushback on democracy. So you're saying that supersedes uranium mining and the country being less well, dependent well, on what, foreign nations? What I'm saying is that the track record that uh, my opponent has, it, it doesn't make sense, you know. Here uh, uh, in this country of ours, the greatest country of ours, we are still seeing uh, a negative uh, impact on uranium mines, especially in tribal communities where it's hurting our people. Another issue would be uh, gravel pits. And I know that uh, your Republican opponent, the incumbent, helped change the permitting process there, cutting the red tape, so he says. Um, <laughs> I, apparently you don't agree with that, but quickly, gravel pits and just improving roads up there, he says he's helped. Is he wrong? Well, there, there's a, a lot more uh, that we need to do to help tribal communities and uh, federal lands. Of course, there's so much red tape in order for roads to get improved, infrastructure to be built in federal lands, BLM lands, uh, also tribal lands. We have to go to, through the Department of Interior, and we have a great advocate there, Secretary Deb Holland. And as president, I worked with her to streamline a lot of those processes so that we could be able to have uh, a better process, a quicker process so that we can build roads and to have um, Gravel pits right in our communities. Right now, believe it or not, Ted, uh, it takes about one to three million dollars to pave one mile of road in a tribal community because many of the material has to come from off the reservation, the, the, the gravel and the borrow. But you know what? In tribal communities, you could be able to develop a, a gravel pit and we've done that before, and we've opened two new gravel pits 
uh, on the Navajo Nation to help, uh, you know, pave a lot more miles on the Navajo Nation. Last question. I asked how you would do, what you would say and how you would try to woo the Republican voters there because there are more, more Republican registered than Democrats. Mm -hmm. My last question to you is how do you woo those people on the Navajo Nation who voted you out of office and you say, now's the time to get me back in? Well, you know, there's a lot of buyer's remorse right now on the Navajo Nation. People saying they made a mistake. But of course, I always say that, you know, God open, closes doors, opens doors. You know, if it wasn't for that defeat, this door wouldn't have opened. I think we have a great opportunity to put the first Native American from the state of, of Arizona into Washington, D.C. And I will do the same thing I did advocating um, strongly for the citizens of the Navajo Nation for Congressional District 2 and all of Arizona. Uh, Congressman Hopeful. Jonathan Nez, no? thank you so much for joining us. Oh, we appreciate thank you. it. Thank you, Ted.